Hi, I'm Astronomy Magazine Senior Editor Rich Talcott. Welcome to Tour the Solar System. In this series, we give you an overview of the objects in our neighborhood. This video focuses on Pluto, a world on the edge of our solar system, and the Kuiper Belt to which it belongs. Pluto doesn't look like much from Earth. It glows at 14th magnitude, making it a thousand times dimmer than the faintest objects visible with naked eyes. Even the sharp eye of the Hubble Space Telescope reveals little more than mottled patches of white, orange, and black. It doesn't appear bright or show much detail for two reasons. First, it's tiny, with a diameter of just 1,485 miles, 2,390 kilometers, and a mass 500 times smaller than Earth's. Second, Pluto lies far away. Its 248-year orbit keeps it at an average distance of 3.67 billion miles, 5.91 billion kilometers, from the Sun. From this great distance, the Sun appears as no more than a point of light, although it would be a brilliant one, shining hundreds of times brighter than a full moon does from Earth. As you might guess, this distant world wasn't easy to find. American astronomer Clyde Taumbaugh, a 24-year-old former farm boy from Kansas, discovered Pluto not long after he joining the staff at Lowell Observatory in Arizona. Using a 13-inch telescope, he took pictures of the sky, returning to the same region every few days. While comparing two images of Gemini taken in January 1930, he spotted a faint dot that changed position relative to the fixed stars. Marked by an arrow in these images, the object's movement was a telltale sign of a solar system object. Subsequent observations showed that the object lay well beyond Neptune, the ninth planet had been found. But Pluto seemed an oddball almost from the start. Once astronomers pinned down its path around the Sun, they found it had the most elongated orbit of any planet. At its nearest, it lies closer to the Sun than Neptune, and Pluto's orbit tips significantly to the plane of all other planets. Combine that with its small size, and Pluto sticks out like a sore thumb. The distant world does have planet-like characteristics, however. In 1978, astronomers discovered a large moon that they called Charon. In this Hubble image, the first that clearly separated the closely orbiting worlds, Charon appears to Pluto's upper right. Then, in 2005, scientists using Hubble found two smaller moons. Researchers quickly dubbed these Nix and Hydra. Pluto's surface hovers at a temperature of minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 233 degrees Celsius, and is covered with nitrogen-rich ices and at least one patch of carbon monoxide frost. The icy patches appear light in these Hubble reviews, which depict different hemispheres. Pluto even has a thin, nitrogen-rich atmosphere. Pluto's official status changed in 2006, when the International Astronomical Union voted to change its designation from planet to dwarf planet, although many astronomers still think it deserves full planetary status. What no one argues about, however, is that Pluto is the brightest member of the Kuiper Belt. In 1992, astronomers discovered this faint object, dubbed 1992 QB1, moving slowly against the background stars. It confirmed the existence of what was, until then, a hypothetical region of icy objects beyond Neptune's orbit. Astronomers have since cataloged more than 1,000 Kuiper Belt objects and expect the region holds at least 100,000 icy worlds. At least one, named Eris, has more mass than Pluto, and several others are at least in Pluto's ballpark. This graphic shows the outer solar system along with the largest Kuiper Belt objects. Note how some have orbits similar to Pluto's, while others, particularly Eris and Sedna, are much more elongated. Astronomers think the objects in the belt formed in the region of the giant planets and later were flung into their current orbits when Uranus and Neptune migrated outward. Although we still have only fuzzy images of Pluto and other Kuiper Belt objects, that's due to change. In January 2006, NASA launched the New Horizons mission on a fast track to Pluto. The probe received a gravity assist from Jupiter in February 2007 and is now on target to reach Pluto in July 2015. When it gets there, as depicted in this artist's conception, it will return detailed images of both Pluto and Charon. You can bet both objects will reveal icy landscapes pocked with craters and perhaps polar caps. We might even see erupting geysers. But the most exciting findings undoubtedly will be ones we can't even imagine yet. I hope this overview taught you a bit more about Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. Astronomy's editors will continue our tour of the solar system in upcoming videos. And make sure to check out issues of Astronomy Magazine, which often include articles and news about objects in our solar system. Until next time.